O Lord Guru Guha, born in Lake Saravana, come quickly and guide me. You are attended on by Indra, Vishnu, Cupid, Brahma, Kings and Lord Shiva. You are contemplated in the hearts of those devoid of passions. You are worshipped by the celestials and sages. The son of the great Tyagraja, O Kumara, you dispel the three kinds of afflictions. Your divine feet are extolled by the serpent king and you take delight in the religious rituals performed by the righteous ones. You great yogi take delight in residing in the minds of sages who perform yoga and raja yoga. A devotional song to Lord Guru Guha by the venerated 18th century Carnatic music composer Mutaswami Dikshita. September 2008, the Carnatic music capital of India, Chennai. This program is about the veena, a seven stringed Indian lute, but most importantly, it's about one of South India's most highly respected veena masters, Kalpakam Swaminathan. It's time for the annual Vinayaka Chaturthi festival, dedicated to the Hindu elephant-headed god of good fortune and help, Ganesha, also known as Pilaya in the Tamil language. The normally dark nighttime streets of suburban Chennai are lit with strings of multicolored lights. The narrow streets are crowded with a mix of people and the atmosphere is relaxed. A small haphazard group of musicians appear, leading a gigantic luminous multicolored image of Lord Ganesha. Any concept, we start with saluting Ganesha. 87-year-old master veena player, Kalpakam Swaminathan, explaining how she sings a devotional introduction to Lord Ganesha before every concert. Carnatic music is essentially devotional and song-based. Kalpakam began playing the veena at eight years of age. She was born in Sethalpathy village in the Tiruvara district of Tamil Nadu, India. However, when she was 13, her father passed away. So she was brought to Chennai with her mother to live with her maternal uncle. In Chennai, she continued to study the veena and also singing. She studied with many influential teachers, including Musiri Subramania Iyer and Tiger Vardacharya. It was Tiger Vardacharya who strongly persuaded a reluctant 25-year-old Kalpakam to teach at Chennai's most prestigious music college, Kalakshetra. I, I was not intent going for a job at all, but I was about learning more and more. But what happened for the interview, I went there, and uh, Tiger Vardacharya, he said, you come from tomorrow onwards to teach here. That way, I, I was <laughs> forced, forced to teach. <laughs> Kalpakam's particular musical lineage traces a direct line from one of the most important composers of Carnatic music, Muttaswami Dikshatar. Born in 1775, Dikshatar is the youngest member of the so-called trinity of illustrious Carnatic music composers. The other two composers are Shyama Shastri 
and Tyagaraja. Muttaswami Dikshitar, whose musical line Kalpakam belongs to, it said that he's like a coconut, that the, he is such an intellectual guy in terms of his musical structures uh, and his lyrics, which are often a uh, iconographic listing of the characteristics of a particular deity, you know, like great God who is holding a mace, who is dressed in such and such a way, and so on. So it's a, it's a literal description of the iconography of a deity, in contrast to a Tiagaraja, which is an emotional outpouring of devotion. Dikshitar's musical structure is often very slow, very stately, uh, very complicated, very unusual music and intellectual musical structures are, are in his songs. So he's like the coconut, so you've got to break the hard shell first, and then you can get to the beauty of the music inside. And that's what Kalpakam Swaminathan is connected with in her tradition. She's an expert in those songs. David Reck is an American ethnomusicologist who's been coming to Chennai ever since the late 60s to study the Veena. One of his teachers or gurus is Kalpakam Swaminathan. Although in his 70s, David continues to study and perform on the Veena. In February 2008, Kalpakam Swaminathan was invited to perform an entire concert of Muttaswami Dikshitar's compositions devoted to the Hindu god Shiva. Here's a track from a CD recording of that concert. The song is entitled Sri Guru Guha and is a favourite of Kalpakam's. O Lord Guru Guha, born in Lake Saravana, come quickly and guide me. Guru Guha, the title of this piece is interesting because uh, the composer used Guru Guha, which is a uh, signification of Shiva. He used that as his signature in his songs. So at the end of each of his songs, he will have the word Guru Guha. And that's like saying, I Dikshadar, whose nickname is Guru Guha, I wrote this composition, as well as being part of the lyrics of a particular song. Attended on by Indra, Vishnu, Cupid, Brahma, Kings, and Lord Shiva. of Dikshitar's composition, every one of his compositions is connected with the deity or an idol which is embedded with the power of a particular Hindu god. It's connected with a specific deity in a specific temple in a specific locality. And uh, all the songs on her CD are connected with the deity as a form of Shiva in the town that uh, the composer was born in.
Kalpakam is considered an authority on Muttaswami Dikshita's compositions, which she especially enjoys playing because of their emphasis on ornamentation or gamakas. Not that I don't like the other musicians' creations, not like that. All are good. Muttaswami Dikshita's, the master has taught us so many songs, and it is full of gamakas. We give importance for the gamakas. The subtle intonation and everything on the veena is achieved by deflecting or, or pulling on the string, just like a blues guitarist. Uh, so you can get any microtone or any subtle changes in intonation that way. Depending on the raga and playing the veena, you play a, a, quite a few notes that are one fret too low, and you're pulling and deflecting the, the strings to get those sounds. So in South Indian music theory of ragas, they're described as if there were no ornaments. In other words, you might have a description of a raga scale, number 29, which sounds like this. Sarigama Padanisa is the first alphabet for the music. It, 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 it then changes to Gamakas. It sounds like the major scale. Uh, if you play it, you have to have the ornamentation, the, the gamakas. <laughs> Prominent Australian jazz saxophonist Sandy Evans has been studying Carnatic music for several years. In 2008, she was in Chennai studying Carnatic music with her musical gurus Karakudi Mani and B.V. Balasai. When it comes to learning these compositions, which I've learned maybe about 10 Carnatic compositions now, which is nothing, you know, you sort of have to have about 120 before you can begin to call yourself a Carnatic musician. But the, the biggest challenge I've found has been how to translate the gamaka onto the saxophone, because the tradition is very much a vocal tradition and so instruments that are able to imitate the voice do extremely well. Um, the saxophone being a keyed instrument is much harder to produce the beautiful gliding and grace note effects that a vocalist would use. <laughs> The tradition is so strict, any slight fault with intonation is just means that the Carnatic listener doesn't really even recognise it as what you thought you were playing. So it's extremely demanding. Just for me as a player, it's been very demanding to try to work out how to make the gamaka suit an instrument like the saxophone. And I think to hear them on the vena is like hearing them in completely the right context.
The veena is an Indian stringed instrument with origins dating back some thousands of years. In Sanskrit, veena is a generic term for a stringed instrument. Today, there exist two types of veena, a North Indian type, which is actually a zitha, and the South Indian type, which is a seven-stringed lute, four strings for playing melodies, and three drone strings. The North Indian veena is directly related to its ancient cousins, as depicted in rock carvings and sculpture. But as David Reck explains, the South Indian veena is quite unique. The South Indian veena developed sometime maybe around 400 years ago. And in that form, it's a standard lute form with a body resonator, which is made of a hollowed out log, actually, just chiseled out in a very laborious process that connects directly to a hollow neck. You have frets, and the frets are set in wax, which is found in the North Indian version also. Uh, the reason the frets were originally set in wax is that you could change them easily just by putting the instrument in the sun for a few minutes. When the wax got pliable, you just would shift the uh, frets according to which raga or which mode you were going to play it with scale. is often compared to the human body. Its big bowl, kadam, is like the human head. The fingerboard that is connected to the curved end with the dragon or yali is compared to the human spinal column. The 25 frets are compared to the vertebrae and the 25 principles of yoga. There is also the story about one of the Hindu trinity, Shiva. The god of destruction created the veena upon seeing his wife Parvati sleeping with her hand across her breasts. Hence the shape of the veena with two globular parts and the fingerboard in between. The veena has one very interesting characteristic that is enigmatic and that is that the frets are set in a chromatic way. The frets are exactly like a guitar in other words. And because the vena appeared in the colonial era, one has to think that a guitar migrated with the Portuguese who were colonizing southern India at that time, and that the local instrument makers and musicians were always on the lookout for things they could use, innovations, and that they picked up this idea of chromatic frets and then uh, built up a system by which the complex intonation and everything of Carnatic music could be played on an instrument that was basically uh, divided the octave into 12, like the guitar. Varasiddhi Venayaka composed by Harika Chandelur Bhagavata, recorded live at David Reck's apartment in Chennai in 2008. Saraswati, the goddess of arts, is always identified with Veena, only symbolizes that music, synonymous with Veena, has primary importance among all forms of fine arts. It is said that when Saraswati plays the Veena, one gets to hear the lyrical form itself, and that is why the word singing is used.
Varasiddhi Venayaka. On the Veena was Kalpakam Swaminathan, accompanied by Mali Amayalpuram on Murdingam. Murdingam is the primary accompanying percussion instrument in Carnatic music. Mali Umayalpuram is a Murdingam virtuoso who is very active in the Chennai Carnatic music scene. Murdangam is a South Indian drum. It's a counterpart of tabla, which is a North Indian instrument. Mirdangam is a very important accompanying instrument in the concert scene that is in the South Indian Carnatic classical music programs. It is the accompaniment by the Mirdangam player is needed by the singer as well as the instrumentalist. So in any program, Mirdangam is a must. Mali often accompanies Kalpakam Swaminathan at concerts. He explains how Kalpakam is of the true classical tradition. She is very much classical. No gimmicks, nothing added. She herself is a lady to be worshipped. She has been pursuing the art of playing the veena for the past several years and she has seen several generations. She has taught several people and she has served in a very famous institutions of a high order like the Carnatic Music College in Chennai and she is very much sought after by a lot of aspiring Veena artists to learn more. Mali particularly enjoys the technical challenges of performing Dikshita's complex compositions. Her stress on the Muthuswami Dikshita's compositions which gives a lot of opportunities for the Mridangam players to fill up the pauses in between the songs and in between the parts of the songs and also the usage of goom keys which gives immense pressure for a Mirdangam player while accompanying Kalpakam Swaminathan's Veena concert. The effect goom key gives. In percussion terms if I tell you tad dim din na tad dim din na tad Dim din na, da dim din na. This is a straight note. I am telling you with gumki. Da dim din na, da dim din na, da dim din na, da dim din na. That's the effect. Despite the complexities and discipline required in performing Carnatic music, for the musician, the ultimate goal lies far beyond musical virtuosity. Marley, David, and Sandy comment on this phenomenon. I play with devotion. Not that I don't attach much devotion when I play other concerts, it's not at all like that. If you climb the platform, it is utter pure devotion which you should have in your mind. But when it comes to a Veena concert, the devotion is more. Devotion is part and parcel of Carnatic music because all songs are in praise of God and Goddess. Wherever we perform, we consider it as a temple in our minds. The discipline of playing an instrument or of singing, all of this is a uh, sacred art. And in fact, you can reach enlightenment through musical practice. You can imagine what it would be like in the West if a music teacher said, OK, play your scales, because you're going to reach enlightenment if you do it right. And so it's, it's kind of like that. It's, it's a serious art, and it's not considered a secular uh, endeavor. It's got this sacredness about it. Marnie, sir, at my very first lesson, the first thing that he said is, music is the nearest path to God. And it was interesting, actually, because I was recording my lessons on you know, a little Zoom, and I, it wasn't working at that point. Um, and I said, oh, that wasn't working. So then I went and switched it all on, fixed out you know, what was wrong with it. And he said it again to make sure that that was the first thing that appeared on my tape. 
So that's very much at the forefront of the musicians that I was working with. Yeah, it's completely where they were coming from. When I was going to concerts in Chennai, I got a feeling almost of a spell. It was hard to describe, but it was it was almost like an opiate or something. I felt this incredible vibration, for want of a better word, surrounding the music. It was it was quite mysterious, quite something I unique, in fact, to my experience in Chennai. I, I haven't experienced quite that feeling anywhere else. And at the concerts, priests would be there because for them it really is like praying. This sacred or spiritual aspect of playing Carnatic music is what keeps Kalpakam Swaminathan still performing and teaching at the age of 87. For Kalpakam, playing the veena is meditation or dhyana, which creates in her a deep feeling of peace and satisfaction. Like doing dhyana, meditation, meditation. Mind and body, we feel very peaceful. It gives me satisfaction much. protected by Lord Tyagaraja, who is the nectar-like ocean of mercy. He who is venerated with festivals and rituals, such as yag, shala, or sacrifice, meditated upon by great ascetics, he is the cause of the origin of all beings, including himself. He from whom originated this universe and the other objects of enjoyment, he is Lord Shiva, bestowing pleasures of life in this world as well as salvation. He whose feet are worshipped by Vishnu, the Lord of Lakshmi. He is the cause of the fivefold acts of creation. He who adorns necklaces, bracelets and diadems. The one who is the Lord of Hatkashetra. The heroic one who bears the sword and the shield. He whose inner self is blemishless and who vanquished Cupid, Kala, the Lord of Death, and Tripursura. He is kindly remembered by Mahadeva and Guru Guha. Poetic lyrics of Muttaswami Dikshita's composition, Tiagarajena Samrakshitohan, devoted to Lord Tiagaraja. We heard Kalpakam Swaminathan performing the composition in Chennai in 2008.
if we look at the specific tradition with its uh, beautiful poetry and so on, almost all the poetry has to do with either a depiction, a description of characteristics of various gods and goddesses, things that relate to the mythologies of these uh, deities, and also things that uh, relate to the personal relationship of the composer in a devotional way with the religious experience in one way or another. So because of this, uh, the sacred nature of the poetry, the music is itself takes on this aura of sacredness. And uh, even if you're a musician, even if you're a vena player like Kalpakam, they all know the words and they all know the translations of the words and what they're singing about. And so this goes into the music itself, even if you're an instrumentalist. The words are very, very important. So vocal music is very, very important. We, we have to not only play, along with playing, we have to sing also. So many songs about the daily Navagraha. The Navagraha's Kritis are a collection of nine songs composed by Muttaswami Dikshita. Each one is a prayer to one of the nine Navagrahas or planets of Hindu mythology. The Navagrahas are nine important deities of the Hindu religious tradition. They are Surya, Chandra, Chandra Angrakan, Budhan, Brihaspati, Sukran, Sani, Rahu, and Ketu. and Ketu. The English equivalents of the first seven are Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. The last two, Rahu and Ketu, are planet-like entities, unique to the Hindu tradition. The seven planet songs also correspond to the days of the week. Actually, from Sunday to Saturday, each day is associated with a planet. Sunday is associated with the sun god, Monday with the moon god, Tuesday with Angarakan, Wednesday with Budan, Thursday with Brahaspati, Friday with Shukran, and Saturday with Sunny. In addition to these seven, Muthuswami Dikshadar's composition also contains compositions on Rahu and Kedu, the two snakes. Suryan, that is sun, sun god. Surya Murte Namo Sudha Sundara Chaya Deepate Surya Kalpakam performing an excerpt of Dikshita's song, Surya, the sun. She'll now perform an excerpt from Chandra, the moon. Chandram baja manasya sadhu khruda yasadhu Chandram baja manasya sadhu Angrakan Maz Angarakam Ashrayam Kam Dina Tashita Jana Mandaram Mangalavaram Bumikumaram Varam Varam Budhan, Mercury, Buddha, Shreya, me, Satan, 
ಸಹತಂ ಸೂರವಿನೂತಂ ಚಂದ್ರತಾರಸುತ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ಜುಪಿಟರ್ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪ the sun consort of the beauteous chaya devi salutations to you o illuminator of this universe bound by cause and effect lord of the house of leo resplendent and adored by the noble men bestower of gifts like health o lord of the sun friend of the lotus and splendor of light of a thousand rays and the father of karna the fire that destroys sin self luminous saluted by scholars and favorite of guru guha o lord of the day chief of the planets like the moon worshiped by the brave the witness of all activity rider of the divine chariot drawn by seven horses soul of the sharastra mantar of golden complexion and who is identical with brahma vishnu and shiva o bestower of devotion and salvation like the lyrics to mutta swami dikshita's compositions which we've been listening to throughout this program kalpakam swami nathan's life and music inspire a deep devotion to exploring the essence of spirituality To end this program, we'll hear Kalpakam playing a Dikshita composition entitled Mahagana Pate, and it's dedicated to Lord Ganesha.